collected and analyzed meteorites. There's more than 40,000 meteorites been brought back from Antarctica. These are two meteorites, and we think they're from asteroids. Right here, this is a carbonaceous chondrite, and this is an ordinary chondrite. These are the most common kinds of meteorites that fall to Earth today. And they contain a lot of iron, magnesium, silicates, things you see in the Earth. So the asteroids tell us about the earliest history of plant building. Here we have little, little laboratories for studying how plants evolved early in their history. And asteroids aren't the only remnants from the formation of planet Earth. In the frigid outer solar system, leftover rocks now orbit neatly in the Kuiper belt, just beyond planet Neptune. We believe in the outer solar system, ice and dust accumulated together into a large number of smaller bodies whose orbits were disturbed by the giant planets, and they were eventually scattered out into what we now call the Kuiper belt. In the past, the main idea was the comets formed farther from the sun. Because of that, the comets retained a larger amount of volatile elements, ices and frozen water and frozen carbon monoxide, things like that, and more organics. And the asteroids as a whole had fewer of those things. These icy bodies are not only located in the Kuiper belt. The forming sun flung comets to the outer reaches of the solar system, which created a spherical deep freeze reservoir known as the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is up to a couple of light years away from the sun. Strangely enough, even though the Oort cloud is farther away from the sun than the Kuiper belt, we think that it may have actually formed inside the inner parts of the solar system. In fact, the reason for this is that some of the materials we find inside comets could only have been formed with high heat. So today, we are building a comet. We're going to start off by pouring the water into the bowl. The water is used because comets are made up of water ice. So we start off with some water. The next thing we're going to add is a couple of teaspoons of dirt. Comets uh, contain a lot of dirt, actually. Dirt consists of various minerals of different types, containing all kinds of heavy elements, such as iron. Next, we're going to add a little bit of corn syrup. Corn syrup here consists of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens that we find inside of comets. Next, we're going to add some of this window cleaner. One of the main ingredients inside this window cleaner is ammonia, which is another common chemical found inside comets. OK, we're going to mix all these ingredients up inside our mixing bowl. And now we're ready to start adding the dry ice. And you can see here, we're starting to freeze all of this stuff inside our plastic bag. All right, and here we have our comet. <laughs> and you can see like a real comet, it's not particularly round. It's pretty lumpy and craggy and covered with dirt. So if we use this light to represent the sun, we can see what the effect of sunlight on our comet is going to have. And you can see what's happening is the warm light is starting to evaporate the gases. So as a comet travels around the sun, the heat from the sun starts to vaporize some of its volatile organic materials, and it starts to lose them in a long tail that can extend out very far beyond the comet. In 1986, the Giotto spacecraft became the first mission to fly by a comet. It was Comet Halley, the only one known to return within our human lifetime and that is also visible to the naked eye. The mission revealed that Halley is laden with several hundred trillion pounds of the molecule needed most by life on Earth, water. Based on this discovery and previous research, astronomers speculate that these icy bodies may hold clues to the source of water on Earth, and perhaps even life.
water. It blankets over two-thirds of Earth's surface. It nourishes plants and animal life, including man. But could this water have come from outer space? Initially, scientists thought that icy comets might have supplied most of Earth's water during the formation of our solar system. However, new research suggests that comets may not have been the primary source for our planet's water. Our Earth's oceans contain a combination of H2O, normal water, and HDO, or heavy water, which includes deuterium, a rare variety of hydrogen that has an extra neutron. It turns out that the comets we've looked at so far, the deuterium to hydrogen ratio is about two times higher than that of Earth's oceans. So it isn't such a good match. Scientists haven't completely ruled out comets, but could rocky asteroids have been a source of Earth's water? The so-called carbonaceous chondrite types of asteroids, which are typically found in the outermost reaches of the main asteroid belt, have an almost exact match between their deuterium to hydrogen ratios and the Earth's oceans. Carbonaceous chondrite asteroids may have less heavy water than comets due to the higher temperatures at which they were formed since they're closer to the sun. The main source of water is almost certainly near-Earth asteroids that have collided and given off uh, large quantities of water vapor, which then, when conditions allowed, condensed as water on Earth. Another possible source of Earth's water may have been identified with the discovery of three peculiar new objects in the asteroid belt. Recently, scientists have discovered a, an exciting new category of object called the main belt comets. They look like a comet. They have a nucleus surrounded by a hazy coma with a long tail extending out. However, their orbital dynamics keep them entirely within the main asteroid belt. So from their orbital dynamics, they look like asteroids. Perhaps the origin of the Earth's oceans could be these main belt comets, which have high concentrations of water and other organic materials. Scientists are still debating whether asteroids or comets could have delivered water to Earth. And the bigger mystery is whether they also could have delivered the essential elements for life. Comets and asteroids both contain organic matter. They both repeatedly strike Earth. They certainly brought in organic matter. How much was dissolved in water and permitted the development of life? We don't know. Over 70 kinds of amino acids have been found in meteorites. Many are the fundamental ingredients of proteins that make up living cells.